Officials with the city and Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center cut the ribbon recently on a new playground at Haynes Park. Yay! The ceremony marks the start of a five-year collaboration to update playgrounds throughout the city, thanks to a $525,000 grant from the medical center. We have a mission to cure and to care, and this is part of our caring mission, and it also actually plays into the cure as well, because we want kids to be physically active, we want to provide environment for people to have social networking and things like that, and parks are a great way to do that. So We see that as a wonderful opportunity for our community. This partnership really shows a commitment by Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center to our, to our youth, so that our youth can grow uh, socially, mentally, and physically, but more importantly, you know, city council had already made a commitment uh, through CIP dollars t towards uh, playground improvements. And that resulted from a 2007 audit that we did with all 47 playgrounds. And we knew that the city couldn't, you know, we would, we would have to change out playgrounds slowly. So this partnership allows us to stretch those dollars and probably to speed up and add maybe one or two more playgrounds per year to a, to a schedule. And so with that, uh, there are many exciting things planned for playgrounds throughout this city. In addition to Haynes, the city has installed new playgrounds in the past three years at Granville, Hathaway, Bellevue, Parkland, and Polo Parks. Three more playgrounds at Rupert Bell, Little Creek, and Old Town Parks will be opened by the end of spring. I think when you go to all these playgrounds, one of the things that you'll see is that we didn't use a cookie cutter approach. Each playground offers a, a, a child a unique experience. And so as a parent or a grandparent, if your child gets a little bored going to Hathaway, you can go over to Haynes Park. If they get a little bored at Haynes Park, you can go to Polo Park. So it gives the parents and grandparents several options to keep their kids occupied. There's so much to do. There's stuff for my little guys, there's stuff for the big guys, and the slides are fantastic. And yesterday they put in the swings for the little guys and it made a big difference. So it's a, it's a wonderful facility and it's safe and it's well maintained and it's just beautiful. So we're excited about it. We had some playground equipment that was very old. We had some playground equipment that was outdated. And in some cases we had playground equipment that uh, no lo you could no longer buy parts for. And so some of it was even unsafe. And so at that particular time, we made a decision after talking with council, uh, and we started taking playground equipment out. So, you know, the criteria that we're using now is, uh, you know, basically looking at playgrounds that equipment is outdated or either unsafe. Uh, looking at that, plus looking at some of the most heavily used park locations. The equipment that was here was old, it was outdated, and uh, we chose this location initially as one location in each ward. So hopefully later on this year we will complete all of those, at least one playground in each ward and then start on a second cycle of playgrounds. This is one thing that we hope to continuously have money uh, either every other year to continue to rehab playgrounds because with 47 playgrounds that's a lot of playgrounds so you just can't do it one time. Haynes Park is one of our busiest parks in our system. Uh, I came by here yesterday at lunchtime. We had pro uh, approximately about 75 kids here, parents eating lunch here and having a good time with their children. And we'd just like for all the citizens to get out and see these playgrounds, experience these playgrounds, and enjoy them because these are your parks and we want you to use them.